One challenge with the provision of public goods and also one crucial di difference between public and private goods is that public goods create an incentive for people to free ride. So free riding comes from the problem that people cannot be excluded from using the public good or cannot be easily excluded from using the public good. And so everyone individually then has no incentive to contribute to the public good because they can assume that everyone else contributes. Problem is, if everyone thinks that way, the public good is not getting produced or is getting produced to a much lower extent and to a lower extent than what would be socially optimal. And a lot of this, the rest of this lecture will be about how can we conceptualize that free rider problem and then more importantly, how can we actually solve it? How can governments, what instruments do governments have to solve that free rider problem? So we will start here with a very simple example um, based on game theory. So here we look at two identical consumers. So they have identical preferences and they can allocate their income between public and private goods. So they each have an initial endowment of 150. And then if, they, if the public good gets produced, that has an additional, has a value of 125 for each. Now to produce the public good, it costs 150 euro. Okay, so, so each, so they both have to chip in 75 euro and only then can they get this, this 125 benefit. Okay, so, so for each of them individually, it's a good deal, the public good, and it's beneficial because they pay 75, but they get 125 out of it. But there may be all sorts of, of problems that, that we will encounter on the next couple of slides. Now they can also spend their money for a, uh, on, on a private good instead, or part of their money. And for that, the value of the private good equals how much they, they, they spend. So equals its price. So then we have to think, well, or have to, 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 to first think about well, what's going to happen or define what's going to happen if both contribute to the public good, if only one contributes, if neither contributes. So if both contribute to the public good, that's what we assume here. Um, we assume that the individual value is 200 each. Why? Because they spend 75 on the public good and 75 on the private good, but from the public good, they actually get 125. Okay, so, so the value they get at the end is whatever they have from the public good and from the private good. If only one contributes then and the other doesn't, um, then the contributor pays the full amount for the, for the public good and the value, but the value they get is only 125. So the idea behind this game is that they commit before they start the game to if one of us, if at least one of us decides that the public good needs to be produced, it will get produced and it will be split between all the people who want the public good to be produced. Yeah? But the problem is obviously um, that if only one person contributes, the contributor pays 125, gets 125, and the other party pays nothing but also receives a value of 125. So they actually make a huge profit. And if neither contributes, the public good is not produced. So here is the illustration of that, that game, and it's called, it has a very famous name, it's called a prisoner's dilemma. 
Um, and so the way we assess these games is always to say, well, suppose one player plays a certain strategy, what is the best action, the best response of the other player? And then we go through all possible combinations. Okay? So let's start with, um, with player one's actions. So suppose player two plays contribute. Okay. So, so we're now assessing from the, the perspective of player one, if I'm player one, then if player two plays contribute, so contributes to the public good, what is my best action? And we can see here that the best action, so I need to compare 200 to 275, and very clearly, my best action is to play not contribute, not to contribute. Now, if player two is not contributing, suppose that was the case, what is my best action then? Well, then my best action is also not to contribute because if I do contribute, I get 125. But if I don't contribute, then, you know, both of us, we just spend all our money on the private good and that's it. Okay? Whereas if I contribute and the other person doesn't, then the other person free rides and I have to pay 100. I only get 125 because I spend all my money on the public good. So, from the perspective of player one, that player's best action, no matter what player two does, is always not to contribute. Okay, so, so that's what we call in game theory a dominant strategy. Now let's look at the other combination. So let's look at player two's perspective. So player two, also has to evaluate what would I do if player one contributes and what would I do if player one doesn't contribute. Okay, so let's start first with player one, suppose player one contributes. So then we have to compare 200 to 275. That's a no brainer. So in case player one contributes, me as myself as player two, my best action is not to contribute. Suppose player one doesn't contribute, I compare 125 to 150. My best action is, my best response to that is not to contribute. So again, no matter what player one does, for me as player two, it is always beneficial not to contribute. And so what we are uh, what we are left with then is a situation where the equilibrium we converge on is the one where neither contributes because each has an incentive to free ride and from relative to the more beneficial scenario of each contributing and getting 200 each has an incentive to to simply deviate from that equilibrium so it's so it's not an equilibrium because it's not stable because people ha players have an incentive to deviate from it whereas from this equilibrium which is a nash equilibrium um no one has an incentive to deviate okay because uh for player one um player one at that stage, if player one decides to contribute, would actually worsen their position from 150 to 125, and the same for player two. So player one has no incentive to move up here, and player two has no incentive to move over here. Those, those two things don't make economic sense because they would lose out. Okay, so, so we are left with a suboptimal equilibrium. So the most efficient outcome would be if both of them contributed, but yet because of these in incentives to free ride, we're actually ending up in an equilibrium that leads to a suboptimal outcome. Hmm? And so for, for any public good, 
This is what we should assume to be happening. Now, people may, be, may differ in, in their altruism and not in every situation they may actually choose not to contribute. You know, there could be some social, there could be some prestige attached to, to contributing. There could be a stigma attached to not contributing. Right. If you, you know, if you think about in, in, for example, in parishes where people can somehow see who puts something into the donation box and who doesn't um, or into the basket, um, there, there might be a, a besides maybe people being altruistic when they're in, in their parish to begin with. But there might be this, this element of social control that that actually brings uh, brings us into the equilibrium that's shown here in blue. Um, also, on a more uh, on, on on a broader scale, you know, when you when you think about the psychology of, of uh, behind you know how we raise our children, we you know in a lot of what we teach our children in how to be good citizens, we basically teach them that you should actually contribute, you should share with others. And that, that basically is an attempt to bring them into this, this situation where, you know, hopefully others will do the same and they're all better off and our society is better off. Okay, so here, here is the, the, the um, summary of, of that, that very simple game. So again, the best responses for each player is not to contribute. That strategy profile so not contribute, not contribute is a Nash equilibrium. And we're in a, in a situation where we are actually in an outcome that is Pareto inefficient because we could make either player better off without making the other player worse off. Quite the opposite, we could actually make both players better off. Now, how can we do this as a, as a government well, we can try and force people to, to pay for a public good, right? Or we simply um, provide the public good and collect taxes to finance it. That brings us then to the, the equilibrium where everyone contributes. They may not contribute voluntarily, but they contribute. Right? Um, but unfortunately, if we don't have that at our disposal, that, that people contribute voluntarily, uh, it, that people are forced to contribute, but we are reliant on involuntary contributions, then we are in a situation where it's easy to deviate from, uh, from what would actually be the, the outcome that is best for everyone. And that is a huge challenge that every government, that every sports club, that every group, every association faces and has to solve somehow. And we will talk about quite a few examples um, of how different, uh, what different instruments are to solve that.